This video is about version control and using multiple branches to organize and streamline the development work that is done in Bubble. Now I'll say here at the outset that really this is only for folks who have already gone so far into Bubble where you are looking at or you already have uh, added multiple team members beyond the original developer, be that yourself or someone that you had hired to work on your app and now you're trying to you know, increase your development capacity to go faster and you want to add another team member. This video is going to serve as a standard operating procedure for how to basically work with branches, get the most out of them so that you can avoid stepping on other uh, team members' toes or that your team members can avoid on stepping on each other's toes as they go about building the app. To get some administrative things out of the way, let's take a look at the plans that even offer this. First, you'll need to be on a growth plan or above. So if you are, congratulations. Sounds like you've got something going and working well for you over in Bubble, and you're ready to add another team member, and you're aiming to, again, make the most uh, out of this process of having multiple developers work on your app, uh, yourself or uh, team that you have hired. So using this, uh, this using version control playlist over on Bubble, I will say that this video is an accompaniment to that because they do a great job of explaining uh, what exactly that, that is. Uh, however, until you actually go and jump in and get into seeing it uh, done live, which we're going to see demonstrated in this video. So this is, uh, again, kind of companion and going a little bit a step further. Um, than what's over there, just in terms of maybe more lengthy explanation, um, because some of the, you know, the steps of creating branches and so on are done over there, but sometimes just seeing things more, seeing things multiple times, or maybe it lands differently coming from uh, this channel versus those videos there, then uh, there you have it. So, you know, everyone of course is familiar with this process, right? You have this main, and this is a development branch, uh, but over in your app, it's going to be called main and you can you know determine where you are are you in main are you in the live environment and obviously they both use different databases things that we don't need to cover for someone so advanced as already you know purchasing a growth plan uh but basically we're everyone's super used to this process right where you develop build develop on this main branch and then when you're done you push to live now these pages these could also just as easily be features and features can have multiple pages or whatever but basically i wanted to show here the chunking of or the dividing up of different parts of your app so that when you start making branches and you have multiple developers working on various parts of the app that they don't step on each other's toes. Because even with branches, it's still possible for someone to work on the same feature, the same element that is inside of your app. And um, you're, it's gonna, you're still gonna kind of run into problems. So here is the straightaway um, advice on how to work and get started. First, you want to come over here and add a new branch. So in this case, I'm just going to add a development branch for myself. And then we can see that added here. And then now that I am, let's see if, uh, am I on this branch or am I? Yes, I am. So actually I want to go back up to main and I want to create another branch and this will be for the other developer on the team. And now we have two branches and we've noticed in their hierarchy that they are both um, just one away from main. And so the what's being shown here is that we have branch one, branch two, and within these branches, so long as we don't work on the same feature at the same time, then everything is gonna go really, really well and really, really streamlined. Now that same thing could be said, yes, of course, of two developers working on the main development branch, don't have them work on the same features at the same time, and you won't run into any issues. But let's be honest, in the world of development and how, um, let's see, just intertwined the systems are that are created when you have a very sophisticated bubble app, which I imagine at this point, uh, you know, anyone viewing this probably does, then you're bound to run into conflicts and the conflict management part of the merging branches process is very, very advantageous. So uh, really step one of, you know, now we're, we're as, as best as possible working on different features on different branches is going to alleviate any conflicting stuff, meaning the UI elements changes to the properties, changes to the conditionals, 
uh, workflows, the triggers, the actions, uh, the conditionals that go into workflows, and then the data, you know, adding data, new, new data fields, not the data in the database. All of these actually work off the same development database, probably something that um, is great to clarify and just great to know from the outset in terms of what are the particulars of what can change and be different inside of the different branches. So great distinction to point out there. Enough on the explanation side of things. Let's go and get into an example where we're going to just view. Uh, so you have the opportunity to see the demonstration of some changes made within each of the branches and then merged up into the main branch. So in this main branch, I'm actually, uh, let's see, I think the way that I want to approach this is, so here I'm on main. I've got a couple different uh, branches open. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to add some pages here. So I'm going to add this new page. Call this branch test page two, and we'll create that. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to add a branch test three. Really, all we've done so far is we've just created new pages in there. But so I'm just going to say this is a pretend feature uh, in branch three. Sorry, branch two. And this feature has an image, and it also has a, um, let's say a button. And just adding an image there. Okay, so this is, again, branch test page three, branch test page two. This one we're going to say from branch one. It's a pretend feature. This one is going to have an input. And a button. And so now we've added a developer that has worked on this branch and then this branch. But then if we were to check and actually both these pages, so these pages were created on this branch. And I'm just going to note to add these to my particular folder in this case for both of these. Okay, so now let's pretend it's the end of the week and this developer has completed all the work that they're going to do on page two or feature two or whatever across multiple pages on, you know, uh, just that particular feature. And then this person has done that as well. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this and merge it up into here and this and merge it up into here. And then this whole area will want to go back to these and sync it with main once all those are done. So all three of these branches will be in sync. So let's see that in action. And that'll kind of conclude the demonstration here on today's video. So here in this branch number one, I've got this feature, it's ready to go. So in order to now merge this up, what I'm gonna do is I will go up to the main branch, which actually I already have open here. So I'm just gonna take that advantage of that. And I'm gonna say merge changes from another branch. So I'm gonna merge changes for this developer, Joe. And I'm going to also, you know, I'm going to give a little commentary on this process here. So Bubble has set this up so that we can, you know, walk through this process and make sure that A, we're confirming the um, the changes that we want to make inside of Bubble, inside of our editor and inside of the branches. And the two steps to pay attention to here is number one, it's going to show us um, basically a summary of all the changes here in just a moment. And then the second thing it's going to show us, it's going to show us any potential conflicts. So even if people were doing their very, very best to not step over each other's toes, sometimes in order to work, do the work that your system, if you know, just because of how systems are all interrelated, you could have feature number one that has some parts of it that actually work or, or are um, related to uh, feature two and feature three. And if feature two and feature three are working on some things inside of feature one that both happen to touch maybe the same workflow, um, we'll see this in a moment where we'll look at uh, the, the conflicts and that'll be this step here. So Bubble takes us through this, uh, this four step process here and it's just basically tell us, okay, we created this branch test page two page. So it's just letting me know a summary of the changes. So I'm just going to go ahead and confirm those. And then also nice work in this, you know, if this was a week's worth of development, then, well, great. You know, the things that are 
multiple developers worked on. And again, this works for more than two, but you know, a team of any size, if there's no conflicts, then it's gonna say great. So then we'll go ahead and we'll merge the changes that were made here and they're being merged up into this branch now. And it's gonna complete that. And okay, once it's successfully completed, you'll see this panel here on the right-hand side where all the four steps, the select the branch, the review changes, the resolve conflicts, which there were none, the merge of the successful thing, and then now we'll say, okay, we're done with that. Amazing. Next up, um, since we're on this main, we're gonna do the next thing. So we'll, we've merged the changes from uh, developer one, Joe. Now we're gonna merge changes from another branch. So we're also gonna take these ones uh, and walk through the same thing again. We'll just see here quick, I'll just kind of uh, zip through this. Okay, and so in this case, we see these uh, confirm our changes. There are no conflicts, amazing. We'll confirm that uh, merge. And we see that it has uh, been successfully brought into the main. Basically, this is kind of what you do at the end of the week once all the development work has been done. Then inside of each of these branches, go and click sync with main. And so we'll sync with main here. And then we'll do the same on this one. And we'll let these go through. So now, now basically, we moved branch one up into main. Or yeah, branch one up into main. Branch two up into main. And so main has all of the most recent changes made to it. Yet these ones don't. And so if we're going to merge one of these in the future into main, we actually wanna make sure that it's synced with main, otherwise we would overwrite what's there. So for example, branch one, well, we are syncing with it. Branch one still only has page one and page two in it. It does not have page three. Branch three has page one and page three in it. So we wouldn't ever want to, after this process, if we, if we did not do this syncing, that I'm showing right now, then um, if we were to not sync, do some additional changes, maybe we add page four into branch one, and then we push branch one into, into the main, we would actually end up pushing a branch that is lacking page three, lacking the changes from this developer, and we would overwrite main, and this person's changes would be lost. So this is like why <laughs> this video is being made, is to avoid these types of costly um, in, in terms of time and obviously time is related to money. If you are paying someone or uh, even if you are just a team of two folks bootstrapping and doing this on your own, um, either way, you're going to want to use your time as efficient as possible. So three non-conflicting changes. And so we see this merging into branch, basically branch two and some changes to branch one, a rename, is gonna be merged into this one. So we'll confirm that. There are no conflicts. We'll confirm that merge. Confirm, there are no conflicts. And we'll confirm that. Okay, and so once that merge is done, we see that we are on this branch. It is uh, successful, merge with main was successful. So we'll just close that out. We see here on this branch, uh, this is one of the branches and it has all three of these pages in it. We would see the same for this one as well. This one has all three because, you know, we've just done that. Last thing then, let's look at a, let's make a conflict, shall we? Um, so let's pretend that, so here's our, in our main branch, let's head over to uh, this page two or something. And let's also head over to page two on here. Now let's say here from this one, this one wants to say, and again, this is like, you know, a very, very simple change, but this could be changing a condition on a workflow, uh, you know, moving some conditionals on a UI or um, however, but this is going to be fit now. And this one is going to say, submit. Actually, let's just go ahead and put it on, on, the, on this main one that we're going to uh, merge into. So here we say submit form and on the main, and then here on this branch, we're saying submit now. So now on the main, what I wanna do is I'm gonna just do the syncing process. Merge changes from another branch, from this second branch, and we'll merge and we'll see the conflict. And okay, so here on this resolve conflict, what it's showing is that we have this uh, text change. So here, the text has changed differently. And 
it's going to show us, let's see if we select this, we can see the change on this particular element. So here's the steps to follow when you're when you're basically processing conflicts. When you're processing conflicts, it's gonna show you this button, submit form. Uh, it's gonna show you, you know, here's the label on this particular element. It's gonna show you, uh, got it. So by clicking this checkbox, we can go and see. And so for example, if we were actually looking at the conditionals here, uh, we would see those conditionals updated. We, could, we can inspect whatever element, whether it's an action, uh, a workflow action, a workflow trigger, uh, conditional on a workflow trigger or action, uh, conditionals on UI. Uh, we could look at, you know, uh, I think if you actually wouldn't be, so you can make changes to a particular element, right? Because you can set properties and things like that on it. Um, I suppose it would also be true. Let's, uh, let's say you had a, a database uh, field or whatever, and you changed the name on that database. Um, it would, I, I haven't personally crossed that bridge yet. Um, but as you can see here, the point is you're taken into that element and you can expect, inspect the changes and then verify which ones you want to uh, accept. So I do, do I want this to say submit now or do I want this to say submit form? And I'm going to say I want it to say submit now um, because that's, that's, uh, that's that. So then it's going to overwrite the one that says, you know, submit form and now it's a submit now. So that change is brought in. That's the official one that we're going with that will, and this is all the prep work that will be done prior to submitting something live. So if you made it this far, uh, that is basically the steps that you would take after all of the developers on your team or you and your development team have completed changes up until a certain point, you've merged things into the dev branch here and you uh, then go back to each individual branch and sync it with what's here and then handle any conflicts like that uh, you know, by inspecting each item one by one, this versus that, and you can accept which version of the updates you want to change. And that is how, uh, and that is why branches are so powerful because even if you had two developers working on the same branch, uh, you would never see that side by side comparison uh, that you know, you actually have the system, you just be relying on human memory, um, which, you know, would be like, what did I do that time when I clicked 150 elements in, uh, and changed 150 things in my bubble work session that afternoon? So if you enjoy this video, give it a like. Thanks, for much, uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.